So this is uh, video number three for chapter four, and here we're going to be solving inequalities with multiplication and division. So it goes with section 4.3 in the book. Check out these pages if you're looking for more help or more examples or more practice. Um, and in this section, we're going to be solving real-life problems that have inequalities that use multiplication and division, and still make sure you can graph the solution that you get. So I wanted to just review um, the symbols really quickly. Make sure you know the name of the symbols, okay? A lot of people miss points on the, the quizzes and the tests in this chapter just because they don't know which symbol and what to call it and which way it goes and what it means. So review video one or section 4.1 if you need to. I'm gonna go through quick examples real quick to make sure we remember how to say them and what the how the graphing works. Okay, so you can put this on your paper really quick by each one. My first example is y is greater than, so remember greater than negative three, doesn't include negative three, arrow to the right. So open circle arrow to the right, and this arrow points the same way as this arrow, so long as I've written it with the variable on the left. x is less than nine, doesn't include nine, arrow to the left. q is greater than or equal to negative eight, it does include negative eight, so fill in your bubble, your circle, and anything bigger, arrow to the right, matches this. And z is less than or equal to two, so it does include two, close circle, and anything to the left matches this, okay? So just quick review, go over the, the how to say them, how to read them, um, what the names are, and how to graph them. Okay, we're gonna go through this kinda quickly, but it's stuff that you already know from chapter three, and remember, if you need to pause, do that. Okay, if I have inequalities that involve multiplication, like I see here, four times b, I'm gonna solve them just like I would if it was an equation. I'm gonna get the b by itself by doing the inverse operation and dividing both sides by four. I copy, bring everything down, that's it. So let's look at this one. I'm trying to get k by itself, it's being multiplied by 12, so the inverse operation is divide by 12 on both sides. Cross out what cancels, bring everything down, recopy my symbol. Negative 24 divided by 12, there we go. And same thing here, divide by 2.5 on both sides in order to get Q by itself. Bring everything down. And negative 15 divided by 2.5 would go in six times. So negative six. Okay, just like with equations, we should probably circle our answer or put a box around our answer. Those two are good to go. This one has some issues because the variable's on the right. I can never have the variable on the right. Got to spin this entire thing around, rewrite it. Q comes first. Make sure the symbol's still facing, pointing the way it should, right? So here the symbol had the bigger opening towards Q, still has the bigger opening towards Q. This is my answer now. So now we'll just go through and graph them. So for this first one, B is greater than or equal to one half. Find one half. It is included, so close circle. Anything greater, so arrow to the right. K is less than or equal to negative two. Negative two is included. And anything smaller, so arrow to the left. And this one, Q is greater than negative six. Q, or sorry, negative six is not included, so open circle. And anything bigger, so arrow to the right. So usually you wouldn't have them on multiple multiple things on one number line. Um, but if it works, if it's easier for you, that's okay for these examples. What about if I see division in the problem? All right, how do I cancel out dividing by three? Multiply both sides by three. So just bring everything down, one times three, cool. And this one, if I'm dividing by 10, I would cancel that out with the inverse operation, multiply both sides by 10. So let's see, 10 times negative 1 half. And just recopy my symbol, bring it down. And this one, how do I cancel out a fraction? Well, I still use the reciprocal, just like we did in chapter three. So multiply by the reciprocal again here. So my shortcut really isn't gonna work when I try to do it on this one. Um, I'm just gonna multiply like I would normal fractions. So I get negative nine over two and bring down my P. So this one looks good to go. Let's graph that. N is less than three. Three is not included. Anything smaller, so arrow to the left. 
This one. M. Oh, not going to work the way it's written. So really, I should undo circling that. I got to rewrite it. Got to put the M on this side. Keep the... Nope, that was wrong. Keep the symbol facing the correct way. So bigger opening towards the M. And then just spin the entire thing around. Now I can circle it and graph it. M is greater than or equal to negative 5. Is included. So close circle. Anything bigger. Arrow to the right. Okay, this one too. I got to spin it around. Make sure you keep your arrow facing the correct way. I'm going to simplify this to negative 4.5. And now I can graph it. So negative four and a half would actually be here. Not included, so open circle. And anything smaller or bigger negatives in this case, so arrow to the left. So here's your first big idea. And this needs to be written down on your paper. Fill in the sentence that you see on there. When you multiply or divide by a positive number on both sides, like we just did in those six examples together, the inequality remains true. Basically, it works. You're good to go. You can do it just like we did with equations. Don't have to change anything. Just make sure your variable is still written on the left-hand side, um, and you'll be good. So here are six problems for practice. So pause the video, try these, graph them, so you know, make sure you have the graphs and the circles and the arrows going the right way. Okay, and then we'll come back and check. Okay, I've got a lot of the work on here. Um, so I showed the work, still showing the steps on both sides. I should still have the lines down my symbols for the most part, like that. Okay, um, and I've got the variables worked out. Also, a couple of them, as you'll see, we had to spin it around so the variable was on the left. So let's go through and graph them. I want you to notice that I actually put a couple numbers in on my number line. I don't just have like a number line with nothing but my answer, my solution. At least put a couple numbers in so we know where we are on the number line. Okay, the first one, x is greater than 1. Open circle, arrow to the right. r is less than or equal to 10. Close circle, arrow to the left. Number three, this is one that I had to rewrite to make sure the variable came first on the left. H is less than negative 20. Doesn't include negative 20, but everything smaller would work. The next one, U is greater than or equal to 16.8. 16.8 would be about here. Close circle and anything bigger. J is less than negative 4.4. So I set up my number line, come to negative 4.4 around here, open circle, and anything smaller, arrow to the left. Here's another one where I had to rewrite it, spin it around, put my variable first on the left. X is greater than negative 1 half. Here's negative 1 half, open circle, and anything bigger, so arrow to the right. So everything we've done so far was work with positives, multiplying by positives and dividing by positives. What if I have negatives? So you have this on your paper. Let's go through and fill in. So I've copied everything twice. The first one is just for us to fill in the symbol as it's written. So nine is greater than six. Cool. Negative four is less than zero. Great. Uh, positive 1.5 is greater than negative 1.5. And one-fourth is less than three-fourths. So in the uh, first problem, I'm just filling in the symbols the way it's written. Then we're going to go through and multiply by a negative on both sides and see what happens. Okay, so I've just picked something really easy to multiply by in my head. So the first one, let's multiply both sides by negative one. Well, negative nine times negative one would just make negative nine. Ne uh, sorry, nine times negative one is negative nine. Six times negative one would just make negative six. And now if I fill in my symbol, actually the negative six is bigger. So the symbol changed from what it was right here. Hmm, let's try the next one. Okay, sorry, got distracted. All right, this one. So now I'm gonna multiply by negative two. Well, if I do negative four times negative two, this becomes eight. And 0 times negative 2 is still 0, but now 8 is larger. 
And again, the symbol flipped from what it was. How about this one? If I multiply them both by negative 2 again here, so 1 and a half times negative 2 would be negative 3, and negative 1 and a half times negative 2 would be positive 3. So the symbol would go this way, positive is bigger, and that's flipped, reversed from what I saw here. And even this one. If I multiply these fractions by a negative 1, well, 1 fourth times a negative would just be negative 1 fourth. 3 fourths times a negative would just be negative 3 fourths. So the bigger negative is actually a smaller value, right? So this, this is a, a larger negative, smaller value. It would go like that. And that's flipped from what I had here. So every single time when I multiplied both sides by a negative, I needed to flip the symbol or turn it around so that it's facing the other direction. Let's see what happens when I divide. Okay, same thing. I still have 9 is bigger than 6. Uh, the positive is bigger than the negative. 0 is bigger than a negative, And 3 fourths is bigger than 1 fourth. So I can fill those in. That's the same as we already had. Let's do the same thing, but we're going to divide by a negative on both sides. It doesn't really matter what negative you pick, but I put a negative by each one. Let's divide. So 9 divided by negative 3, 6 divided by negative 3, and now if I fill this in, the one closer to 0 is larger. That's flipped from what it was. What if I come over here with the 4 and the 0 and divide by negative 2? Negative 4 divided by negative 2, 0 divided by negative 2. Now the 2 is larger. That got flipped. What about here if I just divide by a negative 1? Well, 1 1.5 divided by negative 1 is now a negative. A negative divided by negative on this side turns it into a positive. Now it's going this way. That got flipped. And same thing here. If I just divide by a negative, it changes the symbol of both of them. And now the one closer to zero is going to be larger. That got flipped. So every time I divided by a negative on both sides, the symbol had to spin around. That's what you need to write down down in the box. So there's a box on your paper. Fill this in. When you multiply or divide by a negative now on both sides, like we were just doing in those examples, the inequality stays true only if you switch the directions of the inequality symbol. So if it was greater than, you have to switch it to less than. If it was less than, you got to switch it to greater than. And same thing, if it was greater than or equal to, now it's less than or equal to. It has to spin around and go the other way because that's what happens when you multiply or divide both sides by negatives. So here are six questions, six practice problems where you see some negatives in there. Work them out, show the steps, get an answer, and then graph them. So pause and come back and check. Okay, I've shown most of the work. Let's go through and graph them. Um, here we go. First one, P is less than or equal to negative 5. Pretty straightforward. Close circle arrow to the left. This one, I flipped it because I multiplied or yep, multiplied by a negative, but now my variable's on the left, so I have to spin it again. So now I want to keep it going that direction with the bigger opening towards the V, but spin it around and rewrite it. So V is greater than 6, open circle, arrow to the right. G is less than negative 12.8, Negative 12.8 would be about here. Open circle, arrow to the right. And y is greater than or equal to negative 4.2. So negative 4.2 is close, you know, headed towards negative 5. Close circle and anything bigger, so arrow to the right. And here, again, I have the variable on the right. No good. Got to spin it around. So I want to keep it bigger opening towards the h. And I would get this. Okay, h is bigger than 4 thirds. Well, 4 thirds, that's the same as 1 and 1 third. So about here, open circle, and bigger than, arrow to the right. And a is greater than or equal to 5.95, so almost 6, greater than, arrow to the right. So that is video number 3, multiplying and dividing. And it includes that little trick when you have multiplying and dividing by negatives to f um, flip the symbol in order for it to work. All right. Thanks. Bye.